Hi everybody, this is Anne. The use of dots when drawing or decorating is one of the most basic ways to achieve the illusion of perspective, shading, layering, or even just creating patterns. Varying the sizes of the dots can create a sense of distance, while spacing the dots closer together or farther apart can simulate shadows. In this video, I'll demonstrate three projects using simple dot making techniques to create the surface of a vase. I created three of the exact same vases and let them dry to leather hard. If you'd like to see how I made them, see the link above. For the first project, I used Mako Black and Amico Bright Red underglazes. I'm also going to use a cake decorating bottle filled with slip. I like to use things I can purchase locally, but there are specialized applicators that can do the job with more precision. This particular one works great and has several options of tip sizes. To paint small dots, I prefer using a fingernail detailer brush. I drew and cut out this butterfly template from newsprint. The first thing I did was section off the front quarter of the vase. I held a bamboo stick vertically straight down the pot and traced it. I did the same thing to the backside. Using the red underglaze and a fan brush, I filled in the space to the left of the traced line and around to the other trace line. I brushed on three coats until I couldn't see the white clay any longer. Using the butterfly stencil, I placed it where I wanted it and traced around it. I continued tracing them around the pot, turning the stencil at different angles and spacing them out. I poured just a little bit of black underglaze into the cap for easy access. I dipped the tip of the detailer brush into the black, wiping off any excess, then I tested it to make sure the flow was just right. I wanted small, clean dots. I began by dotting the outline of the butterfly. I'm using only black on the white clay areas. I wasn't worried if some of the dots were bigger than others. That variety of size will keep the butterfly looking natural. Next, I wanted to outline the body of the butterfly. I began to give the wings definition in the center. I added a row of dots to each side of the body to create a bit of shadow and perspective. A monarch butterfly's wings are naturally outlined with black, so it was an easy choice to add more rows of dots along that inner contour. Note that the tighter the dots are together, creates a visually active space where you would want kind of an almost fluttery look. I added more dots along that inner wing space to give the illusion of how the wing has natural branches leading out to the tips. I continued this on the other pair of wings. I added some antenna too. I continued this for each butterfly in the white clay areas. I'll need white slip for the next part. To make the slip, I opened my Reclaim clay bucket and scooped out some of the lumpy slaked down clay. I stirred it around, adding water as needed to get it to a thin peanut butter consistency. I ran it through a small kitchen strainer to get rid of the lumps. You can see it's watered down enough to squeeze through a bottle, but stiff enough to still hold a shape. I loaded it into my squeeze bottle and tested it out to make sure I got good flow and round dots. I had to practice a bit to make sure I was just touching the surface lightly to create those little dots. I followed the same steps as I did with the brush, just creating slip dots instead of painted dots over the red underglazed areas.
Finally, I decided to add an extra design element of a few vertical dotted lines just along the white clay surface to connect and unify those butterflies. Now here's one I made earlier that's already bisque fired. I coated it with three layers of Amico C11 clear glaze. The drama with the contrast of the solid red and the white on the clay surface, plus the contrast of the black underglaze and white slip dots of the butterflies are striking, and the black lines move your eye up and down the hourglass contour of the bottle itself. We used slip dots in the last project to create outlines and shadows. Let's do a project where the slip dots create patterns. I started out by again dividing the piece into sections and coating three quarters of the surface with black underglaze. I gave it three coats and let it dry. To start, I placed a bottle cap in the center of the black area and traced around it. I filled that area by brushing a thick coat of slip onto it. I used my slip bottle to then add small dots around the entire circle. Next, I squeezed out a bit larger dots around those. I did one more circle of even bigger dots. I added much larger dots at the north, south, and east points of the circle. I added dots extending out from the north circle, then trailed dots extending out from each of those all the way back down around that bigger dot to create a petal. I continued this for each of the other dots, even adding two more petal shapes at the northeast point and southeast point. I decided to add another smaller flower underneath it. I started with one big dot, then dotted the north, south, east, and west points. Then I was able to put tiny dots all around the big dots. I accented that with wispy dots radiating out. I did one more flower, just with the radiating dots, along the top. I still wanted to decorate the white part of the vase. I filled a decorating bottle with black underglaze and added dots over the center line all the way down. I then added offset rows of dots along each side of the center row. I continued this until I filled the entire white space. Now here's one I made earlier. I coated it with three layers of Amico C11 clear glaze. Again, the drama of the black against the white is always eye-catching, but the placement of the dots in the different patterns, along with the sizes of the dots that expand and contract, move your eye around the whole form. Moving on from the slip dots, let's do some dot carving. This time, I divided a leather hard vase along the top and bottom. I brushed the middle section with three layers of Amico Avocado Underglaze. I'll be using two carving tools. One is a small loop carver. The other is a small stylus ball tool. I also created a simple ginkgo leaf template for this. I began by randomly placing the template to the surface and tracing around it. I'll give you a free ginkgo template if you want one, but if you want to make it yourself, check out the link to the video above. I began by outlining each leaf with the stylus tool, carving through that outer layer of underglaze. I 
I then carved a line along the inner edge of each leaf. Using the loop tool, starting in the top center of the inner leaf outline, I carved a line right down to the point. I continued carving like this across the upper edge down to the point. My goal was to only have enough underglaze left to show an illusion of ripples and veins. I continued this for each leaf. Now I'll accent it with dots in the negative spaces. I started out carving large dots spaced around the entire vase. I then began to carve a bit smaller dots around the larger dots. Looking for patterns, I began to carve trails of dots with each dot getting smaller as I went. In all the leftover negative spaces, I added little touches of dots to fill them in. You can see the design beginning to take shape. Here's one I created earlier that's been bisque fired. The colors darkened a bit and you can see how the dots create movement to the piece and actually become the focal point. Again, I coated the piece with C11 clear glaze, fired it to cone 5 with a 6 minute hold. I love how the carved dots give the vase an effervescent energy and let the leaves float down. It actually reminds me of patterns from the 1950s, especially with that avocado green color. Dots are the most basic building blocks of any image or pattern and can be combined to create more intricate designs. Hopefully practicing stippling and pattern techniques will give you confidence to expand your decorating skills. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.